The episode begins with some visuals from an idol show with a protagonist, Guru Amamiya's voice and background, sharing that this is a story of fiction, just like everything in this world. The world is full of lies and an idol fan is one who wants to be skillfully lied to as lies are weapons. With that, Gaur screams the name of his favorite idol, I, as loudly as possible, to his tap screen. He wants to see her live but being situated far out at the countryside, this is not possible for him. I is the lead idol of the group B Komashi, which was formed four years ago with media attention. They have finally been discovered by the public and Goro is optimistic about A's stardom. Just then, the lights of the room are turned on by the nurse, who asks Dr. Goro why he is watching a DVD in a patient's room. Goro gives a proud answer that observing something beautiful is good for health. At the roof, the nurse shares the trending news on Twitter with Goro. That idol I goes on hiatus due to poor health. Seeing Goro cry his eyes out upon seeing the news, the nurse praises him for being a true believer and then concludes that he is a lolicon. Goro requests her to not call him a lolicon and shares that he had a patient named Serena Tenduji, who is a crazy fan of B. Komachi's ace eye. Being resided at the hospital, Goro would often slack off in his patient's rooms. Four years ago, Serena would often talk about I, how she is her age yet so pretty and talented. She shared that she wants to be like her if she could be reborn. She asked Goro if he never thought about being born as a celebrity's son, but Goro denied being such a dreamer and told her that she does not need to be reborn as she already has a pretty face, and suggested her to become an idol once she discharges. She got happy and asked Goro to marry her. Goro told her that he would think about it when she gets older, however, she died a little later. Goro states that he follows Serena's favorite idol, superimposing the two of them in his mind. The nurse concludes that Goro is, without a doubt, a lolicon. Goro tells her to stop saying it, especially after he told her a very sad story. She suspects that Goro is only using Serena's name as an excuse for his own desires. Gorov denies it and she asks if I appears in front of him and asks him to date her. What would he do? Goro escapes the question by running away. He enters the room of his next patient, Hoshino-san, a young girl who is at least 20 weeks pregnant. The man accompanying her guarantor as she grew up in an orphanage. Age of 16, raised in a children's home, Goro feels like he has heard this story before. He is right, the pregnant girl in front of him is Hoshino Ai. Goro is delighted to see his favorite idol in front of him at the same time he is flabbergasted to see her pregnant. Ai is still keeping the name of father a secret. The examination's result reveal that she is indeed 20 weeks pregnant with twins. Kawaii Ai is overjoyed upon hearing that she is carrying twins. Goro buys a drink from vending machine and overhears two guys talking about their favorite idol. Miu getting married, thinking if anyone can stand an idol who's got a husband and kids. Goro realizes that idols are humans too and fans are very self-centered. At the roof, Goro is joined by Ai who is amazed by this beautiful countryside and the sight of stars. Goro asks if she came here so no one recognizes her. He adds that one of his patients was a huge fan of her, so he recognizes her. She is surprised as she did not expect her to be known here as well. Goro asks if she will give up on being an idol, but Ai shares that she loves being an idol. She never had a family, so she is happy to know that she is having twins and hopes to have a fun family. However, idols sparkle through the magic of lies, so she would keep her kids a secret. The happiness she pretends to have on stage, she wants to really feel happy and turn this lie into truth. She wants both happiness as a mother and as an idol. Goro is impressed and now that his views as an idol and doctor have aligned, he promises to make sure her twins are delivered safely. Afterwards, Goro helps A with the documents, keeping her name a secret. Then they discuss the pregnancy methods, but Ai tells him that she will manage the natural delivery, as her babies will be cute and small, just like her. All of her time at the hospital, Ai and Goro enjoy their time together. Goro has vowed to ensure Ai and her family's safety. He has started to see lies or love phrase in a good way. Forty weeks pass, and Ai is expected to deliver any time now. Ai tells Goro to come back as soon as she calls when he is about to leave the hospital at night. Goro tells her not to worry as he lives close enough even if he could not come, someone else will take his place. Ai pouts saying that she wants only him. Goro walks home while thinking how his relationship and good times with Ai will end when she gives birth to her babies. However, he is happy to get a glimpse of her hidden side, but he feels that he actually came to like her straightforward personality. Just then, a hooded man approaches him from behind and asks if he is Ai Hoshino's doctor. Goro gets susceptible and asks why he is asking. As Ai is using a different name, he may have seen her around. If that's the case, how does he know A's family name, Hoshino, which has never been made public? The guy panics and runs away. Goro fears that this guy is a stalker, and he might disclose the fact that Ai is giving birth, so Goro runs after him in the forest on mountain until the stalker disappears around the edge of the cliff. Suddenly, the stalker appears from behind and pushes Goro down the cliff. Goro opens his eyes and sees his phone ringing, realizing that Ai has gone into labor. He now moves his muscles and soon his vision starts to black out. Regretting that he could not fulfill his promise to make sure that A's babies were healthy, 
Goro takes his last breath and dies while having flashbacks of Serena's question about being reborn as a celebrity's child at the guys in lobby who were talking about the same thing. Meanwhile, I gives birth to her twins. Goro opens his eyes and sees A's face. He thought he would end up in hell, but instead he ended up in heaven, sitting in the lap of Ai as her son, Aquamarine. He would end up in hell, but instead he ended up in heaven, sitting in the lap of Ai as her son, Aquamarine Hoshino. Six months have passed since his death, and after some struggling, he finally accepts his situation. However, he is still confused regarding having the memories of his previous life. Being a doctor, he decides that he will try to figure it out. The third member of their family is Ruby Hoshino, his twin sister. Funny how Ai mixes Ruby and Aquamarine's name often. The president of her agency, Ichigo Seitu, arrives and informs Ai about her interview, followed by music program tonight that will announce her return. He devises a plan that while Ai is working, his wife Miyako will look after the twins. Seeing how young Miyako is, Ai tells Seitu that other members are super turned off by the way he favors young girls. Seitu warns her that if word gets out that an idol like her became a mother of two at the age of 16, her idol career would instantly end, and he will come under fire as the one responsible for supervising her, the agency would be finished as well. That's why she cannot bring the children to studio. Neither can she go out with them for shopping or to gawk office. If there's an emergency, she can head out under the guise of watching Seitu's kids. Goro is satisfied as Ai is hopeless as a mother, but with Seitu and his wife watching over them as well, there is less to worry. Miyako takes Ruby from Ai's hands and Ai tries to get with Goro, but she slips and her shirt comes down. Goro immediately pulls her shirt back up and realizes that this reckless girl is really hopeless. The interview begins meanwhile, Miyako lies on the sofa, feeling sad for being given the duty of babysitting till she sleeps. Goro notices that his babysitter is sleeping, so he stands up and turns on the tea to watch A's interview. During the interview, when asked if I is fine, she states that she is all healthy for a comeback and is also eating well. On topic of food, her tongue slips and she is about to share what her baby did the other day, but thankfully, she realized her mistake in time and covers it by saying that she means her baby kitten that she adopted during her rest period. Truly hopeless. Before their performance, the whole crew and cameramen are showing lack of interest in the girls and their group, saying that they are just average and over the six months they were out of work, no one talked about them. It the only thing special in them is the good looks of Ai. Even their agency, the Strawberry Production, is small and unknown. The producer shares that in this industry, lies and self-interest are concealed behind the smiles and to get the best performance, everyone including the crew members will lie. After fully underestimating the B. Komachi group, they proceed with the performance. As soon as the performance begun, A's singing and the girls dancing on the whole studio, leaving them all in awe. Meanwhile, Goro is watching the live broadcast from home, adoring and realizing that there's no way to not go crazy around Ai. Goro is grateful to witness Ai so close to him. So grateful that he even thanks the guy who murdered him for bringing him so close to Ai. The sound of Tev makes Ruby up and she gets mad at Goro for not waking her up before the show started. She jumps out of her cradle and starts praising her beautiful mother. She does not stop praising Ai for her face, figure, singing and dancing until the performance ends. She tells Goro that she already cannot wait to watch the recording and complains again for not waking her up when Goro shares that he did try to wake her up a couple times. This dummy Ruby is also someone who has been reborn like Goro. He realized it when one night he found her searching for B. Komashi Ai on a phone and engaging in fierce flame wars with haters. That's when he asks her if she shares the same fate as him. Goro truly wanted to help Ai to give birth to normal children instead of a bizarre set of twins like them. A small scene is shown where the stalker who killed Goro is getting mad over Ai for having babies. Ai asks Goro if he wants her to breastfeed him, but Goro turns all red and declines the offer, remaining contented with a bottled milk. Ruby, on the other hand, would abuse this right of hers. To Goro, being breastfed by an idol would be crossing the line, so a sense of animosity rises among the twins. Seiko takes Ai away for work and Goro asks Ruby if she was a girl in her previous life. She nods and Goro is not angry with her anymore given she too is a girl. Ruby sends Goro away, so she could have Miyako change her diaper. Miyako is angry to be doing this for someone who she only married in hope of working with handsome young guys. Miyako gets an evil idea to disclose the scandal of Ai having babies and sell it to a famous magazine. She starts taking pics of Ai's maternity health record book. The kids try to stop her by pretending to be special beings sent by God. 
Miyako is shocked to see six-month-olds talking. Ruby's performance was very convincing and Miyako was sold when Ruby told her that if Miyako takes care of the children, she might have a second marriage to a handsome model. Later that night, Goro finds Ruby sleeping on the sofa, so he covers her up with a blanket while talking to himself about how this girl talks about Ai with the same passion as his patient Serena Chan. Ruby wakes up and asks if Goro said something to her. She then walks to her bed while thinking that she might have misunderstood as there is no way her brother Aquamarine would have called her by her real name Serena. That was all for the